Hi, I'm Madison Dean, and welcome back to another show of sagas. Today we'll be sharing stories about the boys' swim team, a day on the farm, seatbelt safety, and march for our lives. The boys' swim team had multiple victories and accomplishments this season, so let's dive into the story. Well, going into the season, um, our seniors had definitely set the bar high. Um, they had high expectations. They knew that they wanted to three-peat as city and league champions, um, and they wanted to go undefeated. I think a big goal of theirs was to go down to the Wichita Invite, which is a prelim final meet, and, and take out 6A Power Wichita East. That was a big goal, and, and we were able to accomplish that, plus defeat Wichita Heights, the defending state champions at that meet. Um, so that was a big moment. Um, but their ultimate goal, uh, they, we, we tried not to say it during the season, but the ultimate goal was to win state. We kept saying, you know, top three, but, but they had their set side on the top, and um, I'm very proud of them. Our goals this season were, was to win state, win city and league again. Um, we were telling people that we wanted to take top three, but we knew in the end we wanted to win state. We had a lot, well, obviously we had several great swimmers um, to do what we did. Um, but I think what made our team so great was they all bought in. We had a lot of senior leadership, upper class leadership that, I mean, they decided four years ago as freshmen, here's what we're gonna do. And so it wasn't just like it happened overnight. I mean, they worked solidly for three years to get to that point and putting in time in the pool off season, playing other sports, staying active, um, and they got everyone else to buy in. Because um, it wasn't just a few, it was our entire team and it was an entire team effort, which was what was so fun. Um, I mean, we had 18 swimmers qualify for state, which was incredible. So I think it was the leadership and just that, that eye on the prize, so to speak, attitude, that goal, and, and they, never, they never took their eyes off of it. Um, without Coach Tuck or Coach Garman, I don't think we would have gotten to state. They got in state because they really had our worth ec work ethic um, on task all the time, putting in the days, those two-a-day practices, coming in through the off-season, really just keeping keep us on track and telling us that we could accomplish what we set out to do. Um, I had a good idea that we were going to win state early in the season, but it really just hit me after uh, the 500 in state. If you look at my reaction, you can see when no Florence is coming into the wall, I can see that we just took first, second, and fourth, and that's scoring over 50 points in event, and I knew at that point that we had it wrapped up and we were winning the thing. It was, it was an amazing feeling. You just can't really um, go and do that again, I mean, personally, because I'm graduating, but it's something that's always going to be with you, that feeling of you're on top and you are the best, and it's really a once-in-a-lifetime thing. It's, it's something that I can say that no one else has done, um, and it's really nice to be able to say that, hey, Seaman High School did this, and we're, we're special because of it. Seeing the boys' faces, was just pure joy. Um, they had, uh, well, they had been so focused and so dedicated and worked so hard for that goal. Um, to see them just uh, be so excited, but that was really great. And um, but but also, honestly, it, it was a bit of relief. Um, I mean, pressure had built all season long, and um, so it, it was nice to uh, come through and, and accomplish your goals. Mr. Garman will not be returning as swim coach next year as he has taken a job at Keisha. In other news, Seaman Elementary School students attended Day on the Farm. Here's more about it. Seaman Elementary Schools recently participated in FFA's Day on the Farm. 
Day on the Farm is a way that the high schoolers can actually teach second graders and they are teaching about agriculture. Um, so we do this once a year and we've done it the four years that I've been here and they did it previously as well. Um, so we think it's very, very important for younger kids to understand where their food comes from and understand agriculture in general and kind of just have a base understanding. I think it's something that's incredibly important. Day of the Farm is a community service where about 300 second graders and all of the USD 345 district come out to the North Topeka Saddle Club and we go through stations and we talk about anything from bees to water management to uh, just to talking about horses and cattle. Day on the farm is more than just a day out of school. It's very, very important that people understand where their food comes from and they understand that we need to protect the species that do exist because that is what makes our country and our agriculture really ready and able to thrive. So one of the stations that we had this year was bees. Um, bees are dying off at a rapid rate. We're still trying to figure out exactly what's causing that. We have some theories, but it's also incredibly important that little kids realize that bees aren't bad. They're not going to attack you unless they feel like they're attacked. If you swat at them, that's when they're going to attack, that kind of thing. And so we need to make sure that people aren't just spraying them because there's bees and they realize they're a good thing to have. And then another station that we had was pollution. And so that way people understand as a very young age that pollution is a bad thing. Um, putting excess water down the drain or putting excess dirt down a drain is a bad thing. Um, littering is a bad thing. Um, making sure that they realize that animals are affected and that our water quality in general and our ecosystems are affected by that. Um, and then just overall understanding agriculture. Um, of course, there's only so much we can do as their second graders, but it's really important for them to understand that these animals that we even eat are treated very well um, within their lifespan. So it's important for them to kind of see where their food comes from because a lot of people really believe that their food comes from Walmart where no animals were harmed. It's always uh, nice to see the, the, the second graders kind of always faces light up when they figure out what bees do. and. Um, there is a station called Freight of the Fish, and um, th it has situations where farmers dump anything uh, they don't mean to, or even other people dump things into the water, and they try and g get it out. And uh, it's always nice to see kids or kids' faces light up. High school students also benefit from Day on the Farm. Uh, I hope that they understand um, agriculture a little bit more. It's one thing for them to hear me lecturing about it every day or for me to be talking about it and talking about the importance, but it's really hard for other people to understand and for them to get the information until they actually start teaching it themselves. And so it just reiterates the information that I've been teaching them all along um, and helps them understand. And plus, it gives them a sense of responsibility, which is something that all high schoolers should get to feel at least at one point in their lives or another, where they get to feel responsible for the education of someone else, which is a really cool scenario. Well, I was president, uh, so I'll just kind of walk around, make sure everything's running right, make sure like parents are happy and teachers are happy and the kids are learning. Um, I mean, that's about it, just keeping order. This event will become more successful over time. I mean, um, year after year, uh, I've, I've been doing this for four years now. Um, it's gotten better almost every year. Uh, yes, or last year we introduced the Southwest Dairy and uh, we added more stations, and this year we added even more stations. FFA will continue day on the farm for many years to come. Now let's talk about something a little more serious. April is Seatbelt Safety Awareness Month. Studies show that 68% of people choose not to wear their seatbelts. Here's one student's story. I personally believe that seatbelts do save lives. From what I've seen where people were involved in accidents that didn't have their seatbelts on, as simply as having their seatbelt on would have saved them from being ejected from a car, and that car uh, rolled over them. So there's a good possibility that they would still be alive today if they would have wore their seatbelt. Many accidents are caused by distracted driving. Here as of late, a lot of them have been directly related to cell phone usage when they're driving. Junior Caitlin Charity experienced the hard way. I was super scared, um, but mostly I thought I must be in a dream because this isn't supposed to happen to me. I'm not supposed to get in like an accident. Caitlin was lucky that she had been wearing her seatbelt. The paramedics told me that if I was not wearing my seatbelt, I would have flown through my windshield and that I would have been either dead or I most likely would have been rushed to the hospital with very 
bad injuries and they probably would have had to put me on like life support because I probably wouldn't have survived. <laughs> Wearing your seatbelt reduces your chance of injury up to 50%. Some of the common injuries that we see with people that wear in seat belts uh, will have bruising of the chest where the seat belt has actually locked up and it stops your forward movements. I had some minor injuries on my hands. I had like some cuts that have like scarred now and then I had some cuts on my fingers. And then I had a bruise on my left shoulder that stayed there for a couple weeks. But other than that, the injuries were pretty minor. You should always wear your seatbelt. You never know when it will be you. I would say that your gambling was something very precious with your life and that it's just a matter of time that if you are involved in an accident and you do not have your seatbelt on, that I will probably meet you on some not so well circumstances and I, uh, I don't want to meet you that way. So please wear your seatbelt. It's going to save your life. Remember to always wear your seatbelt and drive safely. For our final story, I'll be covering a march that occurred last month. Let's find out more about it. Students across the state of Kansas gathered at the Capitol to protest against gun violence as a result of the recent mass shootings. On February 14th of 2018, a mass shooting occurred at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. A combined 17 students and staff members were killed. A month later, on March 14th, students across the nation walked out of their schools to protest against gun violence. Since the shooting, many students have become fearful of this occurring at their school. They're very sad and it's crazy that you never know when it could happen to our school or a school nearby because it, there's really nowhere in the United States that's completely safe right now. They are both terrifying and extremely saddening that other kids our age are having to go through this and they have to witness some of their fellow students shot right in front of them and I can't imagine that pain. After the recent shootings, many people have been very opinionated on gun reform. Behind me, there is a march taking place called March for Our Lives. The March for Our Lives was created by survivors of the Parkland shooting. It was a student-led march in support of tighter gun control. Here's what two protesters had to say about the march. Even though my voice may be small and it may not mean much on the larger scale, each voice makes the message much louder. It's not just a few people who have this opinion, it's a lot of people, and to show politicians that they, they work for the people. They, they're supposed to do what we say. With all of the talk about gun violence and gun reform, I asked what others' opinions were on gun control in the United States. The age for being able to buy a gun needs to be raised, at least 21 or 22. If you can't drink, you shouldn't be able to own a gun. There's like basically none right now. I mean, there's a little bit, but it's really easy to get guns and it shouldn't be that easy. There should be more hoops that people have to go through to be able to own a gun. With stricter background checks being implemented in some states, only time will tell what will come from this. More than a million people participated in the March for Our Lives. Well, that's it for today's show. Thanks for watching Sagas, and make sure to tune in next month for our final show of the year.